Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to do some work on a old rusty 2004 Dodge Durango. We're gonna do front brake work. So we're gonna change the calipers to the rotors and the brake hoses. Um, it's pretty rusty, pretty gnarly job, but uh, it's about a five, I don't know, I'm estimating five, $600 savings if I do it myself. I invested about 350 in parts. We'll go through those parts to let you see what they are. And then we'll talk about what tools are needed as we get to um, that point uh, in time as, as far as uh, wrench sizes, etc. Um, the basic stuff, you know, getting the wheels off and all that. We'll get it set up at that point and then uh, we'll go through, try and go through step by step. But first we'll take a look at the uh, parts we bought. I want to take a step back. Um, my, I'm going to apologize to my channel viewers this is not a boss reactor video i apologize this is my daughter's car we got to get her keep her moving uh she's a college student so we got to get it fixed for her and and uh, i'm sure sure hope everybody understands that so let's take a look at these parts we pretty much picked up middle of the road stuff this is a uh, car quest out of advanced auto rotors they were about 60 dollars a piece they're pre-painted um they look pretty decent and uh, usually when I buy stuff, I buy middle of the road. Uh, for this vehicle, I honestly do not know how long it's going to last due to how much, as much corrosion is on it. So also CarQuest uh, Gold brake pads. We went ahead and got uh, our calipers. These are actually from AutoZone because they are a little bit less fully remanufactured. All the hardware is there. Also, um, the passenger side uh, brake holes, we got a Duralast, and uh, those have the uh, all the fittings there. The other driver's side holes we're getting out of O'Reilly's because nobody had it in stock. And then, of course, we're going to need brake fluid, uh, brake clean, this will clean. The oil, as you can see, that's on these rotors. You want to make sure you get those cleaned well, otherwise that'll get... Um, into our pads and it'll just cause a an annoying squeak that won't go away so we want to make sure that that's clean so you do that with the brake clean as I said um, we got a drip pan to collect our brake fluid and then of course we're gonna to have to refill it with the dot three and then we'll get the brakes bled out hopefully we can get wrap this build up today I did get another tool here, and this is a, a spreader for the calipers, but honestly, we probably won't need it because we're putting new ones on. So what comes off is going to get trashed. However, it's just handy to have. You can do the job with C-clamps. Um, sometimes I just like to have the right tools. That's all. It makes things easier. So, what else? Uh, I think that's covered. It's going to cover it for now. We'll get the vehicle set up. Like I said, we'll get the wheels off and get ready to uh, start our disassembly. And then we'll go piece by piece. I think later my daughter may join in and help. I don't know. I don't know her schedule today. So we'll see how that goes. All right. So we get the car jacked up. Jack stand under. I'm going to do one side at a time. First, we broke the lug nuts loose. Uh, it's a 7 8 socket on those lugs. I used a, uh, a breaker bar and then I'm going to be old school and use a speed wrench to get these uh, lug nuts off. You can use an impact driver, of course it's quicker. I just don't have an electric one, and that's on my tool list, but uh, this works for me. Um, we'll get it done and uh, get the wheel off and keep, keep things moving. All right, we're on our last lug. This, like I said, this is old school. All right, usually, these wheels don't want to come right off because they've been on so long and I don't have a big hammer so uh, you can choose to kick it <laughs> and risk injuring your leg or your knee due to the impact or you can get a big hammer a sledgehammer I'm not gonna run out and back get a big sledgehammer so you guys are gonna laugh at this one I'm gonna give it a good kick okay old school this is gonna be a, a front kick according to my schooling in martial arts. There we go. All right, we got that done. Always like to add a little humor to my videos. 
Okay guys, so take a look at this puppy. This is what we're dealing with. So I've been treating this all week with Nut Buster. Sway bars is completely broken off due to rust. Um, I really didn't want to do any work on this car due to the amount of rust that's on it. Um, the brackets, I don't know how long they're going to last. However, this is what we have. Um, it's a solid piece engine transmission. We're going to keep it going as long as we can. And then later uh, get a car down the road. Um, it's a 5.7 Hemi, 160,000 miles, actually about 162,000 miles. This thing hasn't missed a beat, it runs like a champ. Uh, it's had oil changes, so it may be a good donor car for somebody uh, if they want a, uh, a Gen 3 5.7 Hemi. So, anyways, let's, uh, let's get our wrenches and we'll get set up. Okay, we're gonna just open up this uh, top here in the... Uh, Reservoir so we can drain our fluid out. We're gonna We got a 15 millimeter that broke this line loose And we're gonna take this off and then just kind of let this drain And then uh, we'll get the calipers off I could not find a socket In a 15 millimeter I got half of my stuff here and there so. that drain out we'll get the bolt out and then we'll let that drain out next steps we are removing the caliper we're using a breaker bar and a 21 millimeter socket to get it off now on the opposite end you can see that union there this is where the front hose goes through the plate and the hose on the opposite side screws into that so this is what we're replacing we'll go ahead and get these calipers off all right got both bolts off caliper comes off there's some pans you see how bad they're worn. It's like one side is worn more than the other. Um, to return these calipers, we got to make sure the pistons are fully compressed. And actually, they, they look like they are already. Um, they may have been hung up, rusted, and maybe that's why that side wasn't working. I don't know. But this is it. These are off. These puppies are off. So we're going to set these out. And uh, we'll get that rotor off. Blaster on there, bolt blaster penetrating. Just these sometimes get corroded on. this fitting for the brake line I don't know if you guys can see it okay so there is a union it goes in between this plate there's a c-clip on both sides that kind of stabilize it the fitting goes on the opposite side which I was getting to from the bottom side of the car and it's it's really a pain very awkward I can't get to it so I removed both c-clips what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and cut this line so I can pull it through to the other side, maybe get it to drop down to where I can at least get to the fitting because it's very, very awkward. So that's what we're gonna attempt to do. So we chiseled through the line, which was quickest and easiest for me. And then we got it pushed through to the other side. We're gonna thread it through, see if we can get it to drop down and get to that fitting and loosen it. Okay, we actually pulled it through, pulled the uh, line, it goes, it goes to the other side actually, to the 
breakers of roar or union we pulled it out so we can get to it we're going to get vice grips on here get this fitting off we'll get the new one on and then we should be good to go get that caliper on so this is an unusual situation just awkward trying to do stuff from the ground um, instead of a, a lift um, but this is what home mechanics face not my favorite thing to do but uh it's got to get done so we ran into another problem and our line going across from our main block that uh, connected to the brake line to the caliper is this one right here so the fitting is not rotating on the line and uh, causing me some havoc. So uh, we are either looking to splice into it or either replace it. I do have a splicing kit. I gotta find it. Uh, been been a while since I've used it, but um, yes, there's still snow out. It's 45 degrees, but this is how we do it in Michigan. Uh, it's actually a beautiful day out. Uh, sun shining. It's going to be 40s all this week. So looking great. Uh, just happy to be out. You found the flaring tool kit, bender, and the cutter. So like I said, we'll get this going after we get the caliper in. This is a passenger side caliper. And one of the things you want to make sure is the bleeders on top. Because that is how we push all the air out. If it's on the bottom... Uh, you just uh, you will constantly have air bubbles so um, you make sure that this is up and then you will be good to go so obviously the other one is going to be uh, correct so bleeder side up so these calibers at the slides had to have been disassembled you get your clips on for your pads Get your pads in. Once you get your pads in, it's a little awkward. <clears throat> then you can reassemble that uh, piston mechanism. So this is a bit of a task. Once you get your clips on from the disassembly, you get your pads in. And then you, when you reassemble back to the piston bracket, if you will, you want to slip in this side first. The open end, um, you get in last. It's a little bit awkward. You got to work with it. Um, so just beware. Uh, it's just a little, little cumbersome. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to go ahead and get it loaded up. And to get these, the bracket off, to get your clips on from the piston, we'll call it the piston bracket for lack of a better term. It's a 12 millimeter wrench. That's what we use. And then uh, we just get it tight and then just, you know, tighten it uh, a little more. Don't reef on it, but get it, get it tight. So again, once you get your clips in, okay, these fit over. They only go on one way and you'll see an indentation right there the bracket for that clip to go on and then you just kind of slide these pads on just like that and you're going to flip it over and reassemble back to the piston bracket just another point these part of the bracket right here will slide in just the same as the pads are you're going to want to get this part in first because they left this opening for the opposite end to slide in last. So again, it's a little bit of a puzzle, a little bit of working and manipulating. You should be able to get it on. This is the driver's side and I just want to make you guys aware, again, this side, uh, the bleeders up top to get the air out. What was packaged? I had to take this back because they gave me two passenger side uh, calipers, even though they were in boxes with different part numbers, they are different. 
both are the opposite. Um, what they gave me were exactly the same, so when I took it back, I, I uh, talked them into a 10% discount, just due to the time loss, and I had to travel to another store to get this. So, check your parts, make sure they're correct before you assemble them. It's just a good, uh, good habit. I didn't do that. I should have. I assumed they were correct, but they were not. All right, we got both lines on. We got the new brake line on. Uh, we reuse the old fittings on the opposite side and then this junction we had to buy a a metric uh, fitting going over a copper 3 16 holes and then again as you can see down here we junctioned it that goes across the cross member and that's because that one side I just was crowded up I couldn't turn it and I think it was just more or less that coating on that line had that uh, nut, uh, I should have drilled it out, but um, regardless, I would have had to replace the line anyway. So we got it junction, as you can see. And then got the other side completed. This side was actually much easier getting this one on. Um, again, use the old hardware on the opposite side. There's a uh, clip that holds this whole line in place. So when you tighten your fitting to it, it doesn't move. We got the fluid in, and then uh, we'll pump it down. Once you get your uh, master cylinder full of fluid, you pump your brakes one side at a time until you blow your uh, cap off. There's a rubber nipple on there. Of course, you loosen your uh, bleeder. You'll hear it pop, maybe press it one more time, come out, tighten it up, and do the other side. This will blow off. You'll hear this blow off. And then pump it one more time. Come out, and tighten it up. Brake pedal feels up there, feels good. I'm gonna put the tires on and you know what I need to do the test so I can see how it is. So you want your pedals to stay up, continue to fall or feel spongy, then you still have air in your lines. You just continue to bleed them or maybe uh, sometimes it takes two people to do it, one person pumping the brakes, the other person uh, tightening the bleeder after it squirts out. So I don't see any leaks. So I mean all our fittings are good. Okay it wraps this video up so 04 to 09 Dodge Durango they're all the same. So along with the Dodge Aspen. So those are all basically the same, 04 to 09. So hope you liked the video, like and subscribe. Um, this channel actually is about building a Boss Mustang and not about uh, <laughs> changing brakes in the Durango. But uh, thought we'd take the opportunity for some folks out there to get those learning. So hope you liked the video. Again, you guys take care. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.